Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to another video about introduction to Python. This is Puya and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about file handling. We'll see, we'll see how we can open different txt files, how we can read them and how we can create different uh, txt files and also we'll see how using OS and shuttle libraries we can handle different um, uh, we can check different directories, we can create directories, and how we can uh, move our files between directories. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, we'll have eight topics in this part. We're going to talk about opening, reading, closing, and so on. So, let's start with opening uh, files. To open, open the files, we've got... Let me just bring this all down. Yeah, this is better. To open uh, files, we've got several options like reading the files or writing the files and append and other options. I have just listed six of them and most of the times uh, I personally use uh, R based on my needs, which means that I want to open a file so I could simply just read items from it. And another option is using W or write, which means open a file for writing and um, we'll see how we can do them. To open a file, we use we should use function called open. Open is a building function, which means you don't need to import anything. You don't need to install any library. It, it is installed by de, uh, it is there by default in any Python kernel. So simply like print, you just need to use it. You just need to call it. And here I pass the the file name that I wanted to open. Actually, it's gonna say file not found error because there is no such a file or directory called myfile.txt. So I'm gonna create it at the same directory that I have opened Jupyter Notebook. So I I wouldn't need to pass uh, my whole um, address or an absolute address. So here, like hello world, hello world. I don't know, let's add some sentences. Introduction. Introduction to Python. And like this is cool, yeah, huh? That's enough. And I'm going to close it. So it's here. So click on it, it opens it. So let's see what is the file. And as you can see, file is an IO object. It means it is used to create a connection which with which this connection between a file in in a hard drive and uh, the ram or the python program this file uh, this connection is io which means input output which means we may want to get something as input from that file or uh, put something as output to that file and the name of the file is my file.txt the mood is r we talked about the mood. There are several moods, and which is the default mood. And the encoding is CP1252, which is the default encoding. We'll talk about encoding as well. So here you can specify the mood, but the default one is R, but it, it is recommended to specifically specify your uh, mood. So other programmers, when they're checking your code, they would um, easily understand what you are what you have coded so these two lines are the same and these two cells are the same nothing different because the mood by default is r so you can set the mood to w to write your file and you have to be careful using w because w creates the file if it doesn't exist but if it exists it's going to overwrite it so if you go on open your file uh, open a file that is already uh, exist uh, you are gonna overwrite it and you're gonna lose your uh, information your data permanently yeah so be careful when you are using the mood w it's gonna overwrite your file like this one uh, because my file .txt does not does not exist I'm gonna. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, it, it creates it. Creates it. Let's and let me show you. As you can see, my file that uh, my file 2txt It is created here. 
So this is all about opening files. There are several options for opening, so it's better to check each of them and see which one suits your case. Uh, most of the time, as I told you, R and W will cover all the, the requirements, but sometimes you want to open a file to add something to it, okay? You don't want to, like, override it. In that case, you can go on with A. It, help, it lets you open a file to add something to it. But if you want to, uh, there are uh, subtle differences between uh, W plus and, for example, A. What are the differences between them? Uh, we, we cannot cover all of them. It takes a lot of time. But uh, by reading the documents and testing each of them on your case, you'll find one of them which uh, suits your case the best. Uh, it's not complicated at all. Just uh, put each of them in the mood and see what happens. So let's talk about reading files, uh, like here. So after reading a file, how, after opening a file, how we can read it? The first option we've got for reading a file is using dot read, simply. When you go on with dot read, it returns all the options for you. It read all the all the items, all the characters which are inside that file. And let me go on with shift tab to show you. You can pass in a size argument which says read at most n characters from a string. It defines how many characters you wanna uh, you wanna get from your file. But most of the times I get because my files are not huge. I go on with just uh, the default one, which means to get all of them. And if you want to read your file line by line, which is almost most of the most of the time, we want to get uh, our file line by line, so we can uh, perform some operations, different uh, operations on them. If you want to go on, you got two options. The first one is like this: put your open file uh, as a pass your open file as an iterator to your for loop, like this one. Uh, when you do this, it's gonna read the uh, read the uh, in files. It's gonna read line by line and pass each time each line uh, as an step to your for loop. And as you can see, using a nominator, you can see the at the first iterate, it gets the first line, then second line, then, and the third line. Or you can go on with that read lines. Read lines just simply, what did I call it? I call it five. So this is the. Okay, let me open it again. We'll talk about it. At, okay. Or you can go on with read lines. Read lines simply is going to read all the lines and pa uh, pa uh, return it as as a list, as you can see here. So you will have all the files, but uh, the files are split by uh, new line by the new lines uh, or uh, this character which shows the new line. And uh, you can assign it to a line or iterate over it or whatever case that you got. So let's talk about encoding. So encoding this specifies mm -hmm. the, um, the type of encoding that your characters are saved into your operating system, into your heart, okay, by your operating system. For example, let me, um, if you're using like uh, English characters, English language characters. Uh, so you you wouldn't have any problem. You can go on with default encoding, which is CP twelve fifty two. But by, by default, it syncs it is CP twelve fifty two. But if you are using some other kind of languages, for example, Persian language that I'm going to show you. This is my name spelled in Persian language. <laughs> so if you have this type and uh, here, let me show you without encoding, using any type of encoding. So when I uh, read my file I've read, let's call it file to make it easier. And how about printing it? So as you can see, uh, okay, it's not the same as what I uh, saved here. Okay, not this one. 
this one this is not the same as this one because it doesn't understand based on this encoding it cannot understand and perceive perceive the characters that are being encoded in that file in these cases like most of the time changing the encoding to utf-8 which is a universal encoding solves the problem and like this one i'm going to show you let me print it yeah and most of the times if you're using other languages or special characters that you think they may not be uh, they may not be encoded using the default encoding of python so it's better to change your encoding to utf-8 which most of the case it uh, covers a lot of characters but if you are working with a file that it also has some unique characters you uh, if you want to open it in python you should check out its encoding and read open that file using uh, specific encoding that uh, it has so for like Persian language uh, or Arabic characters UTF-8 works fine and as you can see um, this is uh, exactly the same that we saved there but this one is something that it shows that the Python cannot interpret the characters so let's talk about closing files when you open a file there is a connection between that file on your hard drive and your Python program that is being executed and your files on RAM, uh, random access memory. So this connection needs to be closed because when there, when a, uh, a file is open, an operating system like Windows does not let you to make, uh, to make um, changes on that. Uh, and we'll see an example in the context manager section so uh, when you open a file make sure to close it like this one simply dot close will let you close your file and whenever you want to access to a file that is closed for example you want to read it again or something like that it's going to say operation on closed file which shows you that the file is successfully closed so whenever you open your file manually like not manually manually using open function like uh, when you assign it to another variable make sure at the end of your operation operations whatever operations you got at the end of them make sure to close your file so we all may forget to close it because this is the case we all forget about closing your files in the uh, in this cases we've got something called context manager context manager uh, is created to automatically close the file and it's super convenient to use and it's very its syntax is really easy to use and it also uh, helps um, uh, the code readability because uh, when we'll see when we use uh, um, context manager it creates an, a scope and in that a scope we should pass in all the files all all the codes that are related to that open file so when someone sees the context manager they know that all the file all the codes all the line of codes that are inside that scope are related to that file and it's kind of increased the readability of a code so let's see what happens when we don't close an open file here consider uh, I want to create my file 3.txt and its mode is W and uh, I, I don't close it okay I forget it which is a common case let's see what happens here I've got my file.txt for example I want to remove it I want to delete it manually so as you can see it says this action can't be completed because the file is open in Python actually windows helps us and says that the code is uh, opened somewhere else look you cannot make any changes so whenever you open your file in your you open a file in your in your um, python program and you don't uh, and you forget to close it the other programs cannot access to that file which can create a lot of conflicts especially 
when uh, you want to access to those uh, to that file from different uh, programs or different sections of your code so context manager uh, solves this problem um, which we'll see and uh, before that uh, let's let me close it uh, by uh, just explicitly writing the code of f.close and you can see right now I, uh, the connection has been removed and easily the file can be closed and on top of that when you don't close a file uh, and it's open it occupies the uh, chunk of your ram which is not a good uh, thing uh, which is not a good practice for programs like business level programs and uh, in those cases you should be really uh, careful about how much ram do, do you occupy and uh, it's better to go on with context manager that uh, that automatically close the file so this is the structure of a context manager as you can see there is a with keyword this is a reserved keyword for Python uh, it opens a context manager this section open as file this is exactly like this one it says you know what open it and assign it to file it's exactly like that there's no difference between this part and this part and when it opens it it creates an scope definitely all the scopes in python needs a colon it creates an scope uh, and this file this connection to my file.txt is open only in this scope when the code the executor uh, gets out of this scope uh, this file is closed the connection is closed and uh, like this one let me show you again but we can like define encoding so we could see my name in Persian as well and uh, you can do whatever you want to do you can for example pass in the data pass in the items uh, characters of that file to another variable and you can work with that variable out of the uh, context it's totally okay you can as you can see print it out of the scope of this context and uh this file yeah which is here it is closed and for example if i want to access to it to again uh, read something from it it's it's going to say io operation as uh, which means that it is closed automatically although i didn't explicitly type uh, or code anywhere for example like file.close like this one so it is highly recommended to use context manager when you are using when you are when you want to open a file whether for writing or reading or any other type of types of moods you want to follow and again this is another example how we can read lines uh, by using uh, context manager it is exactly like the same again i should pass in encodings to all of them uh, you can pass in encoding to all of them and there is n there is no difference i mean all the options of open uh, works with in a context manager as well so let's see how we can write items to files mm, it's it's totally the same no difference just we should set the mood to w so it's which it means that we want to write a file and after creating a file we can we can use f.write which means i want to write something to it and let me not it's okay um, and we'll see that my file.txt will be overridden also there are some items some characters some sentences inside of it but whenever you use w you should be really careful because it's going to override your file and it's going to write two lines to it and with this file we can read those lines because it read the lines so this one writes to it if you want to write to it you should use uh, this folder for the open um, and use f.write and again you can use uh, this type uh, using like this one but it is not recommended and this this way is much convenient and much safer to go so uh, when you uh, read uh, items 
our file like this one okay i opened it uh, with r mode and i read the read the items from it and if you want to access to the items and our files for the second time you'll get nothing especially uh, and uh, if you don't pass uh, anything to uh, any items here to just get some sections of it when you when you get all the characters from your txt file and when you run it it shows you the items but when you want to access to it for the second time it's going to show it's going to tell you it what it, it is going to give uh, you nothing because when you read a file consider a cursor like this okay uh, let me close it so reload it okay when you open a file your cursor or the pointer uh, whatever you want to call this one is at the beginning of the file so when you read files if you read line by line or if you read the whole file this cursor will move to the end of the file and when you at the end of the file when you go on and say file that read lines again when you execute it because there is nothing at the end of the file to read it's going to return uh, nothing empty a list of empty or just a string of empty sorry about that so it's going to return nothing uh, so don't panic don't think that your file has been missing or something is going wrong with your file you got two options you can go on with opening it again when you open it the cursor is at the beginning the, or the pointer uh, of the position of reading is at the beginning so you can read it or you can use uh, this stick method which uh, when you pass in the zero uh, for the stick method is you simply uh, when the cursor is at the end you simply uh, say or uh, set the position of your cursor to the to the zero index and it comes to beginning so if you want to read uh, a file for several times you got two options you can uh, open it each time which is not recommended or you can change the cursor and you can bring the cursor to the be beginning of your file using dot six zero and as you can see it's going to work like this one so os library OS library or OS module is a built-in library and again you don't need to install NSA it has several functionalities one of the functionality is for example you want to get the current the address of the current directory you can go on with os.get cw okay I have imported at the beginning import OS which shows uh, that uh, it gets the current working directory and uh, OS, which I think is stand for operating system, it helps you to manipulate and get different items uh, done in your uh, different directories, and we'll see a lot of examples of it. There is, it has several uh, sub modules like um, list there, which is the case that we're going to use a lot, and a lot of um, uh, like pass. Uh, sub module that again we're going to use it or make deer make deer we'll, which we'll see and use them uh, so let's see how we can use a list deer most of the time when you are working with um, with a directory full of uh, files you want to get the names of all the files inside of that directory in that case list deer is the is one of the best option you got you pass in the address to your lister if you don't pass it it consider the current directory which we can show it using uh, the dot which uh, which refers to the current directory which is a relative um, sign to current directory it's gonna get it's gonna list for you all the files and directories available in that uh, directory and it, it, it is very useful and handy and as you can see in my directory i've got dot git dot git ignore dot id 
uh, uh, .ipy nb checkpoints and these are the files we've uh, covered so far and several uh, other items that we will uh, that we have uh, in this directory definitely this one will be different for you considering the directory that you are using it so using os list there you can get a list of the names and we'll see how we can get a use of it and uh, it doesn't need to be a correct directory you can pass it an absolute or absolute path like this one and it shows for example what do i have in uh, c uh, drive like recovery intel and blah 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 and uh, let's see how we can use it most of the times when you use os that list there you want to you want to iterate over the names so it's better just simply pass your OS list there as an iterator to your for loop which sits uh, which stands here and you can pass in the one by one uh, the name of those directories and we'll we'll have a task using this one OS list there it, it is very useful in Python especially for data scientists because they are working with a lot of data Another option for um, accessing all the files and directories inside a directory is os.walk. os.walk is uh, high level than os.list there and it returns all the files inside the uh, inside the, uh, the root directory that you give it give to it. So let me pass in I do have it here. Yeah, let me pass it an absolute direct, an absolute path uh, it also returns the files and it walks into the directories and in each directory it returns the file the, uh, the name of the files there as well so it returns the root of the directory that it is uh, it is uh, right now inside of it and then it says what are the directories so it it creates a difference between directories and the files and says for example at the root of my file uh, in my my search or in the tree of uh, that directory that I'm searching it says in which root it is and it says uh, in that root uh, which files are directories and which files uh, are um, exactly the files like txt files and uh, something like that and it goes into each of the uh, each of those directories and again tells uh, and again lists the name of the directories and name of the files for example in this section it says for uh, it shows us that in the in this route intro to python we've got the following directories dot kit dot idea dot ipy and b checkpoints introduction to python these are the directories and it says for it, these are the files as you can see we've got several files in the main uh, in the root in the main root then it changes the route it goes to one of the directories like in this case the first one definitely goes to the dot git and says inside dot git we've got several directories like hooks info logs object riffs and we've got several files like for example commit edit mc mc msj and on now and uh, until the end and inside the git it checks the hooks directory it goes inside the hooks directory it considers it as root and says for example in the inside of this root we've got the f we've got no directories but we've got the following files and so on it it uh, it does it for all the files all the directories, it, it does it for all the directories and all the files. Um, so whenever you want to check all the directories and all the files inside of your directory, OS.walk is the best case. But if you're working in just a sim in one directory, I want to list just only the items in that directory, OS.list is uh, more convenient uh, compared to OS.walk. So how we can create a directory? To create a directory, you can go on with os.mkdir, which I think it stands for make dir, simple case. And you pass in your name, like this one, let me remove this. 
and it creates a directory called Zahra, an empty directory. If you want to create uh, a nested directories, like for example, Puyan inside of it, you want to create a, uh, another directory called Mohammadi, os.makedir does not work because it only creates uh, one uh, it creates a one level directory if you want to go on with two level directories or more than two level directories you can use os.makedirs which creates nested directories as well like this one it depends on your case and there are several other options as well how we can remove a file using os Simply, if we want to remove a file, we should use os.remove. And as you can see, os.removes takes in a path which shows uh, the path to that, to that file. And it doesn't need to be related like this one. You can uh, pass an absolute, uh, absolute path to your, uh, to your file. In here, I just want to go on with a, with a relative um, path and it says that yeah exactly we forgot to close it it says that the process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process where did we open it and we forgot to close it somewhere around here huh? let's see yeah exactly it's here we opened it it was unintentional really we opened it, but we forgot to close it. And the reason I didn't use Context Manager for uh, this um, uh, option was uh, I wanted to have um, to show you different stuff in different cells, and I wanted to be able to uh, run the code uh, to execute the codes in different cells. That's why I used this way of opening the file. And unfortunately, I forgot to implicitly explicitly close it and this is what happens when you open a file even in the same program you want to access to it you cannot and instead the pro uh, you'll get an error you'll get an error so let me uh, close it here manually uh, okay let me see am i missing something here or not let me open it here and let me manually close it so if it doesn't remove it it's it's okay mm, i don't find it who's using it my file that txt let me find it do i have any option you see, we closed this one, huh? We opened it, we closed it. Let's see, do we have it any other places that we haven't closed it? We closed it, close. Okay, let me close it here too. But it's not gonna make any change. So let me see whether it's gonna remove it or not. Still no. Okay, let me see what is the problem. So I couldn't win the match. So I'm gonna change to another file. Let's remove this. So you know I can't remove it. Let me open the file. God, I can't win today. Like that txt that three and. Let me remove this one. Yeah, it worked. I don't know what was wrong. I I may have opened it or something like this that I couldn't do it. I don't know. Maybe something wrong with it. But to make it clear for you guys, if you open like this, for example, my file 3, and... Um, let me set the mood to the W as F and for example, pass. We do this and remove it works. So we have uh, forgotten, we have created, um, uh, we have opened the file and maybe we have removed it. So that's why I couldn't find it. So don't worry if you go on with this uh, context manager, it's super safe and you, you wouldn't, 
encountered such a such an error that I encountered because when you create a file like this, even it doesn't matter if you write the stuff to it like this, it's not gonna change. Hello, it's not gonna change the fact that you can remove it. So if you don't wanna encounter the conflicts and error that I encountered right now, it's better to go on and use um, the with um, statement. So uh, if you wanna check whether a directory or a file exists, after removing a file, if you wanna try to remove it for the second time, it's gonna say the system cannot find a file specified. So uh, a safer way is uh, that you may want to check whether it exists or not, like os.pass.exist, okay? If it doesn't exist, if, if it does exist, you can remove it like os.remove. But if it doesn't exist, you can pass uh, the os.remove so you wouldn't encounter any error, errors or conflict. Like this one, for example, demo file.txt, it doesn't exist. So we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna, uh, encounter any errors here when I created it uh, when I create it I can simply remove it but for the removing it for the second time it doesn't work because the file does not exist in this case you can use os.pass that exists which checks whether it exists or not the deleted directory you can go on and use uh, let me call it Zahra you can go on and use rm, which stands for remove uh, directory. It removes the directory. And if you want to remove a ne uh, nested directories, uh, you can uh, go on. Uh, actually, it is removing a Mohammadi. Uh, you, uh, again, uh, rm directory removes one directory. It doesn't remove uh, nested directories, which I'm going to show you right now. As you can see here, it removed the Mohammadi. Okay, not both of them. If you want to remove uh, nested directories, we'll see it's not possible with this function because uh, it says that the directory is not empty and we'll see in the shuttle section how we can remove uh, nested directories. Remove nested directories. Directories not possible with os.rmd. So, there are some useful uh, options in os.pass uh, module. The first one is a split. When you have a, uh, a pass like uh, this one, when you have a, let me call it path, not, or directory pass, directory path, this is better. And for example, you wanna get the last part of it. Okay, in that case, you can use uh, os.path.split. What does it do? It's, uh, it simply splits your code, your uh, path, to two sections, a root and the, rest, and the, and the last uh, part of your root. As you can, let me show you an example. Uh, here, for example, C users Puya projects intro to Python. When you split it, you got the last sections and you got the root like this one here. This is how you can split your directories. Uh, we've got uh, an example for a splitting the extension. You know, most of the times, data scientists, for example, they want to work. Uh, they want to know whether the file is like JPEG or 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 they want to create some some file with different extensions for for a, for the same file. They want to get the extension of a file. Uh, if you want to split your file based on the extension, for example, here I've got an introduction, intro to Py, uh, intro to Python dot ipynb. Also, that does not exist, but who cares? This is just uh, um, for uh, this is an example. I want to get the extension and the file name. Okay, in this case, os dot path dot split text will do the job it returns two uh, two uh, items the first one is the, the first one is the name without the extension and the second one is the extension itself ipynp and we'll see how we can use it in the following exam in the following task that we got after shuttle so shuttle module or library like 
the OS library is a built-in library, so you don't need to install it, remove, uh, install it, or um, no, just you don't need to install it, and you simply can access to it by um, importing it. So we talked about make deers. We are going to talk. Uh, we'll, we are going to see how we can remove uh, a directory, a file, uh, a directory that contains files. We saw that uh, we saw that we cannot do it using rm directory. So here I'm, I I want to create a directory which is called like temp, and uh, I want to again inside of the directory I want to create a test.txt. So I would have a directory which contains files. And you may ask, what is this exist? Exist.ok. Exist.ok, let me show you. Uh, it's simply a uh, very oh, uh, here. It says if the direct if the target directory already exists, raise an OS error if exist ok is set to false. If you if exist OK is set to false and the directory that you want to create is already created, in that case um, you're gonna get a OS error. But if you set exist OK uh, to to true, it's gonna tell the Python that you know what if the directory exists, just pass. Don't raise any any error. So here I just wanted to go on with exist uh, OK because uh, in that case I can run this code several times. And here I have a temp directory which consists uh, which contains a test.txt. As uh, the previous cell that I showed you, you rm dir does not work. The directory is not empty. But shuttle.m3 works in this case. Shuttle.m3 simply says that remove the tree of files. No matter how many files are in it, just remove them all. Uh, Test.txt. Oh, it's being used here. So let me let me pass it to a file and let me close it. Okay. This one does not work, but cannot access the file because it's being used. But I removed it, didn't I? But I closed it. I think something wrong today with open. So to make this safer, I'm gonna go on with this as file. As file. And I don't need to close it. It will close it manually. Okay, I'm going to change temp to temp1 and temp1. Temp1. Okay, it works. I don't know, there's something wrong today with uh, using open and I can't find what it is. So if you know what is wrong with it, just comment it. Uh, below so I will realize what is wrong. So again, maybe I have used a lot this context manager and I and I have forgotten the subtle uh, um, Differences these two may have Okay, we got a temp file and I created a test.txt inside of it to remove it You can use rm3 which is in uh, which is in shuttle uh, library and one more thing, we've got os.pass.join here. We talked about how to split files. So how we can join uh, different directories. If you want to join different directories with different files or just different directories together, you can use join. And um, what does the join do? What does the join do? I can show you the text path. Uh, so I can print it for you. What does it do? Um, pass. Oh, I should pass it here too. Okay, as you can see, it creates a directory, so you don't need to go on with um, this uh, backslash, because if you want to, you can create uh, you can uh, create this backslash as an a string. Okay, uh, this directory, this path as an a string, uh, as a string. 
But there is a problem if you uh, explicitly co statically coded uh, uh, in your uh, program. The problem is that when you are working in Windows to um, to split to uh, identify different directories, uh, you need backslash. When you are working in Linux to specify different directories. You need forward a slash so it is not it is recommended if you have a, if you want to join directories it's better to go on and use os.pass.join because based on your python version this os.pass uh, join creates this creates this backward and forward slash okay if you run this same code in a linux uh, machine you are gonna get tmp on the line forward slash test.txt so i strongly encourage you to use uh, if you want to join some directories together use os the past the join to um, get away from this type of conflicts between different operating systems and so we talked about how we can remove files and let's talk about how we can uh, move files consider we've got we create a temp file and we want to move all files uh, uh, my file let me see whether it exists or not yeah my file exists so i want to i want to move my file.txt to t temp my file.txt okay so in this case uh, the move will uh, just simply cut the file and paste it to the to to any place that you want and there is uh, uh, a note here that when you're moving your file you don't need to have the same names okay for example shuttle.move you can move my file uh, with another name which i'm going to show you again okay we've got the same problem of not letting us to make any changes so i'm going to create my file three very fast here three very fast and i'm going to move this one so we're we moved it to attempt and uh, to the temp directory as you can see my file three is here and also uh, because it is moved we don't have my file 3 anymore let me copy it here and rename it to my file 3. Mm, three okay when you are moving it you don't need to have the same name okay we can change the final name to whatever name you want i want to for example move it to temp1 with the my file name like this and as you can see inside temp file we have my file.txt so when you're moving a file you can use shuttle.move and in the process of moving you don't need to have the same name okay you can change the name of your file as well and um, here you using that copy you can copy your files between different directories which i have done it here for temp2 and i have moved my file from temp to from temp uh simply just temp to temp to like uh like the move it's it's gonna copy your file so let's see how we can use all this stuff that we talked about in a simple task you can see uh, the task says that create a directory which contains text files contain text files with the same name as the ipimp files in the, in, uh, in the current directory in the current directory okay uh, the current directory is intro to python we've got several ipimp file okay so i want to create a temporary directory and inside that directory we want to have the same files for each of these files we want to have a same file ident identical that their names should be identical but uh, these are IPI and B, but in that temporary file, we want to have like text files. This is a step one, which I, which I have coded it here. For the step two, it says after creating your temporary directory, what you're going to do, you are going to move your text files from that temporary directory 
two new directories that you have already created uh, that you are going to create it in that temporary uh, directory with the same name and at the end you are going to remove all this stuff so uh, let me change temporary file temporary name to temporary because it uh, to get away to <laughs> the difference of the, the problem that we had here because we we opened several files and we forgot to close them and we opened them without you know, using context manager so not closing them creates conflicts like the one that we encountered so the step one is implemented and we're just gonna see uh, I'm gonna explain you the code and we're gonna implement the second part together so we got a temp name which is called temporary we got a directory or, or the root directory whatever you want to call it which is the current directory of my code and uh, the uh, temp path or directory path is the join of directory with the temp name okay when i do this i'll get this one current temp dir, which is temporary and using os.makeDears, I make sure that I have that I'm creating it. And no matter how many times I uh, run this code, I'm not gonna encounter errors because exists okay is set to true. So I have this temporary directory here, as you can see, which is empty. And what we want to do, we want to in this um, in this temporary uh, folder or directory, we want to have txt files. Of which their names is identical to ipy np files but their extension should be definitely txt to do this uh what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just iterate over the name of names uh, over the files that are available in this directory and as you know there are other uh, options other files like .id .git and other folders and stuff here as well which i don't want to um, create a txt file for them because they are not the uh, they are not the subject of this uh, task so there is a uh, very you should come here uh, there is a very uh, a trick a uh, simple trick we can do is that we get the file names and each time we are going to check whether the file name ends with that ipynb using this we make sure that we are gonna just process or uh, create uh, txt files on those files that uh, they end uh, with dot ipnb so we'll get all the files but only we'll filter those that are uh, end with dot ipnb and after that i'm going to use a split text because i want to get the extension because i want to remove the extension because uh, i want to add my own extension which is dot txt like this one okay so here i split the extension the extension of dot pi nb is going to be uh, assigned to ext and the, the name without that i pi nb is going to be here and what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to use temp dir which is this one i'm going to join it with the name the new name that i have plus dot txt okay so uh, and after uh, after having the full path to my txt files i'm going to open the txt files with the mood of w and i'm going to write the name inside those uh, inside those txt files so also os that list here passes um, dot git to me i don't have uh, let me open i don't have any file like dot git dot txt okay or i don't have any file like dot git ignore dot txt i only have file for um dot dot ipy nb files so this is one of the use uh, this is one of the codes that you are going to use a lot if you if you want to become a data scientist because you are going to manipulate a lot of files when uh, as a data scientist you gotta you got a huge files and you should um get each of them and work uh, get each of them one by one and maybe filter them like this one and make changes for each of them so what is the second step the second step says create a directory by this name here 
by the name of this file and move this files uh, each of the txt files there so what i'm going to do i'm going to say uh, ipy nb or i'm going to say file name file name in os.lister so what i'm going to list i'm going to list all the names which are inside this temporary directory what did i call this temporary directory okay i called it temp here okay so i'm gonna just print like this one an info which gonna help me to realize what is going on so it's correct this is what i want so i want to create a directory to create the directory i'm going to go on with make os that make the uh, make tiers what should uh, what the directory should be called should be called uh, as uh, zero as the file name without the extension so i can go on and says uh, and code like file name and extension like this one like the previous one or simply i can say file name equal to you know i'm gonna say like name equal to file name and i'm gonna say till uh, the index four because i know that this is minus one minus two minus three minus four and uh, I I, th uh, I say this check take only those that take the name till uh, the minus one index and before that like I would I could say if file name make it safer that ends with dot txt okay so the name would be like this here okay not that one here I want to always make there so again I have to create uh, the inner directory os that pass that join using temp there and the name that i created we can i can print names info dear name dear name let me print this so we would make sure we're working and we are creating the exact directories yes exactly this is the directory that i want to create for this one yeah so it is perfect i can go on with inner there and let's say exist okay true let's set it to true and after that it's time to move or files using shuttle that move i want to move these files but as you know these are just file names okay these are not uh, these are not the full path to the file so i should go on with os that pass dot join like um, temp there and file name i want to move this one to where to os dot pass dot join i want to move them to here okay so this is a dear name which i call it inner name with the same file name i don't want to change uh, i want them to have the same txt name and that's it move it let's see no errors let's check the output so as you can see we created the directories and passed in the txt files to each of the directory and as you can see each of them contains in, uh, its name without any extensions and at the end we are gonna let me come on i'm opening it open from there let me close this uh oh open files okay and at the end using shuttle.rm3 we can remove all the items that are inside the temp2 so that was all for this tutorial we checked a lot of stuff a lot of usual stuff like how we should work with uh, files how we can open them how we should use context manager just just use context manager <laughs> you wouldn't face the errors that i face and we see uh, we saw how we can use os to uh, check out different um to um, walk through different directories and get the names of different directories and how we can use shuttle to remove 
uh, copy and remove files. This is not uh, all about OS and Shuttle uh, library. There are a lot of stuff about them. Just uh, by searching on internet, you would find a lot of use cases that uh, suits your case. Like always, please subscribe the channel, click on the bell ring and like the video. And I strongly encourage you to introduce the videos to your friends so they may benefit from them as well. Thanks for watching till the next video.